Hi, I'm Glenn White with EuroSafety, and in this video, we're going to discuss the stuck pedal procedure for the AS350 and the AS355 models. In this video, we're going to limit the discussion to the procedure itself. Now, it's obviously very important to have a thorough knowledge of the systems and the various reasons why a stuck pedal can occur to safely address the malfunction. And of course, in the EuroSafety classes, we discuss these very important pieces of knowledge. As we discuss this maneuver, it's very important to remind you that the procedure is based on a standard situation, and you may have to alter how you address this malfunction based on your situation. So let's go ahead and discuss this maneuver. The Eurocopter flight manuals refer to a stuck pedal as a tail rotor control failure. The flight manuals state that a tail rotor control failure is the jamming of the pedals or loss of pedal effectiveness. These conditions can make it impossible to change the tail rotor thrust with the pedals. In other words, when you attempt to move the pedals, nothing happens, or when you attempt to move them, they are stuck in that position. After we have determined that we have encountered a loss of tail rotor control, the Rotorcraft Flight Manual recommends that we adjust our airspeed to 70 knots. Now, we are going to attempt to try to center the nose of the helicopter. The reasons why we do this in the mechanical understanding of the systems will be addressed in your Eurosafety Ground School. To attempt to center the nose, we need to remove all hydraulic assist to the tail rotor control servo, including any pressure that may be present in the all-load compensator. Now, depending on what model or variant that you're flying, will determine how you uh, accomplish this. Once we perform the actions to center the nose, the aircraft may center depending on the reason why the stuck pedal malfunction occurred in the first place. The preferable landing area is a runway environment. This allows us two advantages. Obviously a nice smooth runway surface in order to land the helicopter and it could provide us with emergency medical response if needed. As we make the approach to the runway, a shallow approach is utilized. If we make a steep approach, then at the bottom, as we get close to the ground, we're going to have to add a lot of power. This obviously is going to change the position of the nose. So with a nice shallow approach, very little power changes occur. So on this shallow approach, the nose is going to be off to the right because we're going to have a low power setting. Now prior to getting to the runway, we can slow down as long as that nose does not pass the center line or even really get too close to it. As we come down to the runway environment, we're going to come down to three feet above the surface, and this is the trick for the maneuver. With us at three feet above the runway, we don't need to think about power changes at all. It will automatically occur. So as we're going down the runway and we're keeping three feet, we're going to adjust our speed to try to find the airspeed that holds the nose straight. Now again, you don't need to think about the power changes that are occurring. All you need to think about is three feet. And again, the nose will start off to the right. And as we're going down the runway, three feet above the surface with the nose to the right, we're going to slightly slow down. Now, once we slow down, the nose position change will occur very slowly. So we need to have patience with this maneuver. So we adjust our speed, remaining at three feet, and we wait, and we wait, and the nose will slowly start coming to the left. We will continue to keep making those speed changes until the nose is lined up center with the runway. This will be our perfect speed in order to land the helicopter. Now, what often occurs is we end up getting too slow, which will cause the nose to be too far to the left. Now, if that occurs, it's best to just start all over again because it's very difficult to get it back to the left. In fact, going around at that point can also be difficult. What often occurs as you add power, the nose will go further to the left, first of all, and you will add forward cyclic. But you have to remember that forward cyclic in the direction of the nose isn't necessarily the direction of the aircraft. You have to put the cyclic in the direction of travel, which usually requires a lot of right hand uh, cyclic. We're going to continue to go down the runway at the three feet, trying to find that speed that's going to hold the nose straight. Now often you cannot find that 
perfect airspeed the first pass. And we can continue to make passes until we can find that perfect airspeed. So if you get towards the end of the runway and you haven't found that perfect position yet, what you can do is start over again, add power in, which will cause the nose to go a little to the left, add that right cyclic in and do a go around. And we'll set ourselves up again. The trick for this maneuver is the landing portion. Finding this speed is actually the easy part. The hard part is the landing because you're gonna to have to fight yourself with a lot of learned muscle memories that are gonna occur. So as we come down to the runway, we'll again come to our three feet, find that perfect airspeed, and we're gonna hold that nose straight for a while. And at that point, we're gonna add some forward cyclic to start a descent. Not a lot where we have to add power in order to cushion our landing, but just enough so that we start coming down closer to the runway. Now, as we make contact with the runway surface and are firmly on the runway, with that cyclic forward, you're just gonna keep on sliding. So now at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add aft cyclic to induce a braking action, and we're actually gonna steer with the collective. So if you add collective, the nose will go to the left. If you reduce collective, it will go to the right. So you would make these slight inputs with the collective and you will be able to steer the helicopter as the friction from the runway surface on the skids brings the helicopter to a stop. I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial on the stuck pedal maneuver. I hope we see you in a Euro safety ground school one day and fly safe.